Welcome to Females and Fine Fettle, from Wiped Out to Wealthy. This is where conscientious women entrepreneurs and women living like a boss come to learn about balancing their personal and professional wellness with ease. If you have the enthusiasm, motivation, and grit to make it happen, then listen up every Monday. To be sure you don't miss an episode, sign up for weekly updates at femalesandfinefettle.com. The following discussion is for educational purposes only and is not intended to diagnose or treat any disease. Please don't apply any of this information without first speaking with your doctor. Now, here are your hosts, Denise Pasquinelli and Dr. Michelle, your natural women's health advocates who blend the wisdom of ancient healing traditions and the science of functional medicine. Hey there, and welcome back to episode 47, my two favorite numbers, four and seven. (laughs) This month, our focus is on boundaries and beyond. And to kick off the month, we're doing our functional five, a.k.a the funky five. So in this episode, we're going to be touching on boundaries in regards to personal, interpersonal, professional, societal, and the spiritual or source level. Awesome. And I just have to say, I think boundaries is a really fun topic as we are sliding into a super social time of year and being social and having deeply enjoyable long days and long nights is a total blast. And if we're not mindful of our healthy boundaries, we're likely to be totally burned out by the time we get to fall. I lead these Ayurvedic-based seasonal cleanses, and I can tell you that the one offered in late summer, early fall, almost all of the participants are feeling the symptoms that are associated with total burnout. So hopefully by talking about boundaries and ways to hold our own now, we could have a more balanced summer. I love that idea. (laughs) All right. So let's address uh, the personal aspect. So when we talk about personal boundaries, we're actually, um, well, Denise and I are actually talking about looking inwards. So how is your gut functioning? Do you have any issues with leaky gut, right? That's a boundary, right? Your inner, inner boundary. What is your brain or how is your brain functioning? Do you have any issues with leaky brain? Yes, that is a thing. Um, Mm -hmm. when we have excessive inflammation, our membrane integrity is compromised, which can cause a whole host of symptoms that can even lead to issues around autoimmunity with certain predispositions. So we need to remove the big culprits and emphasize things like nutrient-rich foods that help to decrease inflammation, nourish our microbiome, and support proper detoxification and elimination. Also, I think our genetics play an interesting role when it comes to boundaries. We're you know, born with a certain genetic blueprint, but through epigenetics, we can emphasize our strengths and really mitigate our weaknesses. So If you're in my private Facebook group, you may have seen me post a couple months ago about a genetic test that I'm experimenting with where you can actually get these completely personalized supplements, these customized supplements, um, and also nutritional recommendations and lifestyle guidance from these results. I'm not offering this quite yet to my clients because I'm still experimenting on myself, Um, but I'm super excited about the prospect. So if this interests you at all, please reach out and I will definitely keep you posted on when I'll start offering this service. Oh, that sounds so cool. (laughs) I love it. Um, I would love to just talk about that precious gut lining for a moment. I love that we're bringing this up as a boundary. I sometimes talk about the digestive system as the donut hole of the human body. And this is because from the mouth to the anus, there is essentially a hole or a space that's semi-separate from you that is dedicating itself to processing the food from the outside world that gets introduced into your delicate ecosystem. It's charged with mitigating all that goes into your mouth and deciding what's useful, so what will become you, and what is harmful or waste and needs to be removed from you. So it's an incredibly important boundary. And as Dr. Michelle mentioned, a damaged gut lining is one that is letting foreign objects through into you, which causes your immune system to engage. It's also a boundary that is quite delicate. In some places, it is only one cell thick. So it's very important to think about how the gut lining is treated. 
I have a little cute one pager that simplifies what you can do to reduce damage to the gut wall and as well as repair and repopulate the gut microbiome. We'll link to that one in the show notes. It's a fun one. Yes. Great info. Definitely grab that little freebie from Denise. Also, real quick, our skin is another personal barrier. And I see so many women who have skin issues, whether it you know be acne, eczema, psoriasis, or even just simple dryness, but our skin is a reflection of our gut health. So no matter what, it's really important to address the gut. Yes, I love that. Yes, yes, yes. (laughs) All right, so let's move out a bit and talk about boundaries when it comes to our relationships with others. Cool, yes. So I have become a pro at interpersonal boundaries <laughs> over the years. Uh, it's definitely an acquired skill for me and anyone out there who is inherently a people pleaser, right? So there's this delicate balance, right, where we can effectively hold space, listen, and sympathize with another person, but at the same time, avoid taking on that weight and that heaviness or even urgency of their situation. Um, Denise and I have both gone through Marie Forleo's B-School. Um, And I think Denise can agree with me that getting that ticket for the no train (laughs) is one of our most powerful tools. Yes, I love the no train. And I think once you hop on and get into the practice of saying no, it becomes so much easier to do. One book that I just love is called Essentialism. And it's one that I turn to every now and again to get me back aboard the no train. The full title is Essentialism, the Disciplined Pursuit of Less. And it's by Greg McCowan. And we'll link to this book in the show notes. But in the book, he shares a different way to think about saying no. Many folks don't say no because they don't want to disappoint But oftentimes they still do. They disappoint themselves by running themselves too thin. And this might make the other person that they said yes to actually feel bad for putting them out. So that kind of sucks, right? Like you're trying to do good, but in the long run, it doesn't actually turn out that way. Or they might disappoint themselves by not doing work that's up to their typical standard and because they had too much on their plate. So this kind of sucks for everyone. So in the book, he talks about saying no in order to be respected in the long game rather than being liked in the short game or in that immediate moment when you're saying yes to try to please when you really mean no. Totally. That's one of my favorite books too. Super, super, super Mm -hmm. important to keep that in mind. Um, And I think that concept you just mentioned can absolutely apply to our professional life too, right? So moving on to the professional realm, I think, you know, this is one of my favorites of our Funky Five that we're covering today because it's honestly probably the most difficult for me. <laughs> so for anyone <laughs> anyone who really knows me, they know that I can be a borderline workaholic. So I have to be really sure to create strict boundaries around my time, both when I'm working directly with clients and when I'm working on the back end too. Um, so content creation and things like that. I know I've talked about this in a previous episode, but time blocks are a total necessity for me. I work for one to two hours depending on the day and what I really need to get done. And then no matter what, I take a five to 10 minute break to focus on some breathing, do some jumping jacks or burpees, right? Or or even just like stretching or walking around. But it's incredibly effective at improving energy and mental focus. Another way I'm trying to implement this um, into my life right now is considering content creation for social media by uh, really decreasing and curating my output, um, repurposing content that I already have, because I mean, let's face it, not everybody sees all the content that we create. Um, if you're a content creator, right? Um, only a certain number of eyes get on it and then creating new content that is really incredibly valuable to my audience, right? Not just some more white noise. So don't get me wrong. This is no small feat, but I am trying. One of the ways that I'm doing this is through my 
weekly Facebook lives. I put a lot of effort and I, I'm trying to write notes and like be really prepared for these. Um, so if you haven't tuned into one yet, definitely check it out. Let me know what you think. Um, and I'll link to my Facebook page in the show notes. Awesome. And I so hear you on this one, Dr. <laughs> Michelle. I kind of, I've been thinking a lot about how almost any pursuit has this added requirement of creating a lot of content and it's fun and it feels so good to create something of value, but it also takes up a lot of time. So I love that you're working on that right now. I (laughs) want to work on that with you. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Um, but you know, I, I just, I always feel like there's a lot that I want to do and that I could do and that I want to try to do like I'm an interested person just like you just like all of our listeners and so it takes some real effort to say no to things but in the long run I know that a key strategy for me is to also create time blocks I tend to create a block at the beginning and the end of my day which I find sets me up for a really solid foundation to be able to respond in the ways that I really want to the rest of the day. I try to be really protective of that time. We talked about this in a previous episode, but for me, a solid morning routine is one that includes hydration, contemplation, meditation, and writing. And it's key for me to be able to be the way that I want to be throughout the course of the day. Mm-hmm. I also really dig the idea of creating blocks of time that are free from tasks or uh, sometimes referred to as white space to let the mind be totally untethered. And I know that these can be really hard to create, but I think they are invaluable when it comes to creative, focused, excellent work. So if your work schedule is totally cray, I recommend you block out a bit of time on your calendar each week to just let the mind wander and honor it like you would a meeting with any big wig or CEO. Totally. I'm (laughs) so glad that you brought that up because it's such a huge, huge piece of the puzzle. Um, I definitely set aside time for white space and I kind of find that it's during those moments of white space that I get some of my best ideas. Absolutely. (laughs) All right. So, uh, approaching the societal realm, um, going back to intestinal boundaries actually in leaky gut, something that I find fascinating is that there's a lot of uncertainty around, you know, why we have such a high prevalence of leaky gut in our society. I see it all the time. But when I think back to my Chinese medical background, it makes perfect sense. So in Chinese medicine, the small intestine where leaky gut tends to be, um, it's, it's the small intestine is paired and, um, really intimately related to our energetic heart. Um, so when we're chronically under too much mental stress, this causes heat in the heart And then we increase that heat by drinking coffee, alcohol, smoking, relying on too many supplements because we're eating like crap, right? This all increases heart heat, which results in, you know, mental restlessness, irritability, issues with sleep, anxiety, and even elevated blood pressure. And since the heart and small intestine are so intimately related, this directly affects our small intestine. I think that's so cool and just a really, really interesting connection. Mm, I love that connection. I also, you know, thinking back to what we were talking about earlier with the gut lining being the barrier between the outside world and the cells that make up your body, and then thinking about the gut and the heart as gateways, essentially, that bring the outside world in, it just makes a ton of sense to me that they're linked And when viewed through this social lens, that they are both, in essence, breaking Mm. right now. Like, it's kind of a hard world out there um, for the heart and, consequently, the gut. So, so, so true. Yeah, in my practice, I find that a lot of women um, are really deeply affected by the news, right? Like, everything you see on there is 
doom and gloom. And to be perfectly honest, I don't watch it. Like I don't, I don't see the point in getting more worked up, creating more of that heart heat and intestinal inflammation we just talked about, or, you know, even feeling helpless. I know sometimes, you know, you, you have that, if, if you're like me and you have that like activist heart, um, you can, mm. you just, you end up feeling so helpless because you don't see that the, that you can make a bigger impact on the world or create change. But, you know, I truly prefer to focus on improving myself and positively impacting my community and the people immediately around me and my clients, which have a much greater benefit um, in the short and the long term than really being paralyzed with anxiety and worry. Uh, yes, I agree completely, Michelle. Um, and you know, it's funny, just yesterday I was listening to an On Being podcast. It was an interview with Elizabeth Gilbert. And oh, I forget like who said this in the full context, but essentially she was talking about um, somebody saying it's important to be careful about how much we get fixated in the negative and all that's wrong with the world and likened that to dancing with the devil in a sense of just being completely consumed with all that's wrong um, and that, that that levity and the lightness is, is really important. Uh, so all the things that you talked about you know, it's kind of like counter to all that's negative and counter to, to the, the devil, if you will. Totally. Um, so yeah, all the things that you talked about helping being conscious of your community and, and helping those around you and keeping a sense of lightness, mm-hmm. super important. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'll just say, you know, I noticed that anxiety, stress, overwhelm, and that kind of hopelessness, helplessness sort of feeling are some big themes that I see in the world right now. And when I ask ladies to tell me more about a typical day and what, you know, like some of their triggers are for anxiety, there is almost always something related to social media or the news or the TV or the radio. Common themes that I've noticed are jumping onto social media first thing in the morning, sometimes while still in bed or even late at night when trying to fall asleep being engaged with the news and social media at those times uh, can be really damaging. Mm -hmm. These are times that are super important to have that solid footing for the day or a solid restful sleep at night. I kind of think of it like taking other people's dreams and dramas to bed with you. (laughs) So if I could make one recommendation to strengthen this boundary between your essence and societal challenge, it would be no phones in the bed. And I know that it isn't easy. I know it's just, it's comfy to kind of roll over and scroll your feeds, but try to make the bedroom a sacred screen free place. Try it for a week and at the same time, track your sleep and your mood for that week. And I bet you'll see some market improvements. Totally. I, I think I always, whenever I hear the term feed or feeds, it is so like, it's crazy, right? Like that's what we're being fed, right? Like, oh, Mm -hmm. so wild to like look into the actual wording that we use sometimes. All right. So, Mm Lastly, let's talk about creating boundaries on the spiritual or the source level. So this is definitely related to the personal piece for sure. But on the spiritual source level, you know, we're connecting with something greater. For you, this might be meditation or prayer or some other sacred time that you set aside to connect with something greater than yourself, no matter, you know, what your background or belief system is. You know, maybe it's just hugging a tree or walking mm-hmm. outside barefoot. You know, these things reconnect us with the earth, ground us on a physical, mental, and emotional level, and also give us space for that brain break and that white space that Denise mentioned earlier. Mm, I love these suggestions. And I also love to work with a cosmic connection. Mm -hmm. One way to do this is to work with the phases of the moon, the new and the full moon 
or having like a new and a full moon ritual are great ways to reconnect to the phases of the moon and that chronobiology that we get to witness each month. I know Michelle loves it when I say (laughs) moon. I love it. (laughs) The new moon is a really great time to make space and think about what you want to grow for the next couple of weeks. And then the full moon is a great time to kind of take stock on how that went and then decide what you're ready to let go of. Mm. So just having a little simple awareness to this rhythm of the cosmos can be really grounding and a nurturing way to bound your time and even some of your goals. I also think um, self-care and like what it means to reconnect and nourish can be different for all of us. And one clue into that is what your moon sign is. Mm-hmm. So you can look that up if you know the date and uh, time and location of your birth to figure out what your moon sign is. And then look around and get some clues on what would be nourishing to you based on that information. Like I said, self-care certainly does not mean the same thing to everyone. Uh-huh. I love it. (laughs) Um, All right. So that's a wrap for this week. I hope that this Funky Five supplied you with a little brain fodder so you can identify, address, and adjust any boundaries that you need to on the day-to-day. So in next week's episode, we're going to be taking a deeper dive into the realm of professional boundaries. So we'll expand on what we talked about today, but also bring in some other ideas and tips surrounding how to manage those boundaries so you can really take your professional life to the next level. So have a great rest of your week and bye for now. Thank you for listening to Females and Fine Fettle from Wiped Out to Wealthy, a podcast to fit your lifestyle. If you like what you've heard, please subscribe, rate, and review at femalesandfinefettle.com. If you have questions or topic ideas for upcoming episodes, we'd love to hear from you. Please be sure to tune in next week.